بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اشد اللہ الہ الا اللہ وحد لا شریک اللہ و اشد انّا محمد عبد و رسول آئی بے وٹنس دیٹ دیر از نان ورتی آف ورشپ ایکسپٹ اللہ ہی از ون اینڈ ہیز نو پارٹنر اینڈ آئی بے وٹنس دیٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم از از سرونٹ اینڈ میسنجر ویلکم ٹو ان سائڈ احمدیہ نزل المهدي فينا مرحبا شمس الزمان فأقام الدين شرعا للذي يبغي الجنان Welcome to Inside Ahmadiyya, a brand new program which is being streamed live on our YouTube channel, MTA Online One. Now you may be wondering, what is this program all about? Well, Inside Ahmadiyya is a program which will promote the living beauty of Islam found in the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. We'll do this through the lives and experiences of its adherents. And we will also, along the way, debunk some allegations raised against the community. Now this episode is for the content creators across the internet. who take great pleasure in attacking Islam and the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. And Inside Ahmadiyya is here to cut through the white noise and provide you with the true, beautiful and pristine teachings of Islam as found in the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. Our aim is to provide a fair platform to discover together what is the true pathway to spiritual excellence, to see what true Tawheed and love of the Holy Prophet وسلم, looks like in reality and to measure just how powerful true devotion to prayer can be. And also to see who really is a Muslim. Now I say this because we as Ahmadi Muslims refer to our brothers and sisters who haven't accepted the Messiah according to the prophecies of our beloved master, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We refer to them as Muslims. However, when the shoe's on the other foot and they refer to us, they refer to non uh, Ahmadis, they refer to Ahmadis as non-Muslims. So in today's program, we will debunk the allegation that Ahmadis are not Muslims by demonstrating that Ahmadis are true and loyal Muslims in every sense, be it in spirit, love and practice. Now, as mentioned, this is your platform. We invite all of our Muslim brothers and sisters who are watching across the world to be part of our show. In fact, we challenge you, please get in touch. Rather than just believing what you may have heard, or cutting and pasting things and taking things out of context, or even m making misleading videos online without presenting all of the facts, come on the show and present your allegations. Let's have a fair and honest conversation. And the way to do that is very simple. You can call us, you can message us, or you can email us. All of that information is on your screen as we speak, or you can get in touch through all of our social media platforms. Now to help us in today's conversation, we have three missionaries joining us, two of which are in the studio, Abdul Qudus Arif Saab and Atal Fatir Saab. And joining us all the way from Sweden, we have Gashif Virk Saab. Um, Asalaamu Alaikum, guys, it's good to see you guys. I'm just going to ask now briefly if you, one by one, could just introduce what you will be talking about today. So Fatir Saab, what will you be talking yep, about today? So I will be talking about a great legacy of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. which was revived by his Messiah, Hazrat Mizawullah Muhammad alayhi salam, and that is establishing a communion and connection with Allah and how he did that and how Ahmadis experienced that communion and connection. Okay. And Kashif Saab, how, what will you be talking about today? So I will speak about the key to any spiritual excellence in the Jamaat as pro presented by the Promised Messiah alayhi salam, that if you want to attain any spiritual excellence in your life, the love and devotion for the Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has to be matchless. So that is the foundation of this Jamaat, Alhamdulillah. The love of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which I will speak about. Exactly. And Qudus Safani, what will you be speaking about? Exactly, Usman. Today I'll be speaking about how Ahmadiyyat Islam is transforming the lives of the youth and how it's an integral part of making sure that our youth stay connected with Islam and through their practical demonstration of Islam, they can build a living relationship with God Almighty. Okay, well that's great and we will get to our panelists very briefly. Now, anytime there is a discussion about Ahmadiyyat, it's always centered around the fact that whether Ahmadis are even Muslims and all kinds of allegations are leveled claiming that we are not even in the fold of Islam. However, nothing can be furthermore from the truth. 
And this is something we don't need the validation or edict from any other Muslim. For us, the declaration of the Kalma, and in fact, Fatih Sahib, I want to put you on the spot. If you could just tell us what the Kalma is, because again, some of Muslims say that Ahmadis have their own Kalma. So what is the Kalma? La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And very quickly, I just want to ask before I move on, another allegation, which is, and it sounds so silly saying yeah. it, but it's they, we, they were accused of this, is that when you say the Kalma and you say the name Muhammad, do you actually mean Muhammad? Because sometimes it seems as if non md Muslims have this power to read what's in our heart and our minds, and they say that we mean something else. So yeah. what do you mean when you say Muhammad? It's funny because they do say, when we read the Kalama, they say, no, you're referring to Hazim Zaghulam. When we're not, we're referring to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who Allah sent in Mecca, and who started Islam. There's, you know, it's, yeah. it's sad that we have to clarify that. So there we have it. This is the basis of our belief, and this echoes in the heart of every md Muslim. For this, we don't need any validation from any other Muslim or for them to judge our status as Muslim. In fact, in one hadith, we find that the Holy Prophet وسلم, has described exactly what a Muslim is. The Holy Prophet وسلم, has stated, anyone who says there is none worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is his messenger or says, I am a Muslim, he will be considered Muslim and will be judged according to Islamic rulings. It's very clear. End of discussion. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ has made this clear for us. But if someone still has any doubt, then let's take it one step further. There's another hadith in which Jibrail says, O Muhammad, inform me about Islam. The Holy Prophet ﷺ replied, Islam is that you should testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is his messenger, and that you should perform salat, pay the zakat, fast during Ramadan and perform Hajj to the house, which is the Kaaba, if you find a way to it or find the means for making it the journey. Jibreel said, you have spoken the truth. Now this hadith you can find in Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim is an authentic book. It's something that non mds and MDs agree upon. And you find that the archangel of Allah is having a conversation with the greatest prophet of all, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now here the conditions for being part of Islam and being a Muslim are very clear. There's no argument left. This hadith alone speaks in support for any person that practices these traditions and teachings of Islam. So there's another hadith, again, Sahih al-Bukhari. This is the most authentic book of hadith. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, defines a Muslim, but he also adds something very interesting at the end. He, said, he says, Man salla salatana wa staqbala qiblatana wa akala dhabihatana fadhalika al-Muslim. That whoever does our salat, Ahmadis do, same salat that other Muslims yeah. do, face our Qibla, we face Mecca, the Kaaba, and eat our slaughtered meat, that is a Muslim, right? He defined that, done. But then he adds another clause on. He said, فَذَلِكَ الْمُسْلِمُ الْبَلْذِي لَهُ ذِمَّةُ اللَّهِ وَذِمَّةُ الرَّسُولِهِ That this is a Muslim who is under the protection of Allah, and he's under the protection of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he ends, it seems like the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew what would happen with the, the Masih and his, his group. He says, فَلَا تُخْفِرُ اللَّهَ فِي ذِمَّتِهِ Don't betray Allah by betraying those who are under his protection. It's, it's as clear as day. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, we're going to move on to our next segment in which we will showcase the love that Ahmadi Muslims have for Allah the Almighty. Shadu Allah ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship Except Allah. Allah, he is one, he is one. and has no, has no partner, and I bear witness, I bear witness. that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his servant and messenger. So, Fatih Sahib, if you could tell us the connection that Ahmadis have with Allah the Almighty. Sure. So, in 1900, the famous German philosopher, Nietzsche, he made a claim that would define the Western world today. And he declared 
God is dead. Because all religions were saying that. They were saying that God doesn't speak anymore. During the same period when he made this claim, the Masih of the Holy Prophet وسلم, declared that God is alive today and he speaks today like he spoke before. And anyone who follows me, I will show them the true path of Islam and they will have communion with Allah. Now this is a time when other Muslim ulama were saying that God is deaf, he's dumb, he doesn't speak anymore. And Hazrat Mizr Ghulam Ahmad salam, said that he does. Lots of ulama, very highly ranked ulama, accepted Hazrat Mizr Ghulam Ahmad salam. For example, one, Hazrat Hakim Malvi Nuruddin radiallahu anhu was a very, very prolific scholar of his time. He accepted Hazrat Ahmad salam, and he was asked by other Muslims, what have you gained by accepting him? And he said to them that before I would see the Holy Prophet وسلم, in dreams, now I see him whilst awake. Another companion of Hazrat Ahmad alayhi salam, Mulvi Ilyas radiallahu anhu. He was asked in a congregation by Muslims that why did you have to accept Hazrat Mizr Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salam? What have you, how have you benefited? And he said to them, he stood up and he said that I went all across India. I went to all the different sects, all the different ulama, and I asked them that I am trying to find Allah. I want to speak to Allah. I want to have communion with Allah. But they all said that God used to speak, but He doesn't speak anymore. And Mulvi Ilyas Sahib radiallahu anhu says that there was just this one lone voice who took me in and He said to me that, come, follow me. I'll show you the Islamic way and God will speak to you. And then Mulvi Ilyas Sahib told the other Muslims that I testify and I swear that God speaks to me today. Is there anyone from among you who can make the same claim? Of course they couldn't. 115 years on, we've seen so many examples. These examples are just, you know, that they flood the history of the Ahmadi Muslim community. I'll give you three modern day examples. The Review of Religions magazine does a God Summit every year. And Ahmadis express how God speaks with them, how God manifests himself to them. One example is of a lady who converted to Islam Ahmadiyya from Christianity. She converted and she said she still needed that 100% conviction from Allah that she was following the right path. When she was at her in-laws who were Ahmadi, in the morning, she spent the night there, in the morning she went to her mother-in-law and asked her mother-in-law, did you hear that recitation throughout the night? And she said, no, we didn't. She said, I heard the most beautiful recitation of the Holy Quran throughout the night. And I've never heard such a recitation in my life. And to this day, I have not heard such a recitation. It was beautiful. And her mother-in-law said that all we heard you saying at night was Alhamdulillah and Subhanallah. And she says that that night when I heard this recitation of the Holy Quran that others didn't hear, Allah solidified the belief of Ahmadiyyat in my heart. Another person from the USA, an Ahmadi. This is how Allah communicates and shows himself to Ahmadi Muslims. He said that at the peak of summer, it was a very hot day, I was mowing my lawn and the heat got so intense that it overcome him and he felt like he was going to die and he thought the heat stroke would take over. And he said, I was just thinking this when suddenly a cold breeze blew by and completely got rid of that ill feeling that I was having, that heat stroke that I was having. And he said that as I lay, I, as I lay there, I looked at the trees around me and I thought that this breeze should be moving the trees as well. But they weren't. The trees weren't moving, they were still. And he realized that was Allah showing him himself as well. Now, finally, throughout our history, there's one point where Allah particularly shows himself and manifests his support for Ahmadi Muslims. And that's at the election of the Khalifa. And Allah says himself in the Quran that I will establish Khilafat for these people, for the true believers. And during that election, Previously, people who don't even know who the Khalifa is going to be, Allah guides them through dreams. He gives the name. He said, this is the person you need to elect. 
He gives their face. You haven't seen him before. This is the person you, you need to recognize in that election and elect him. In fact, there was um, one Ahmadi Arab who is also the Amir of our Jamaat in Kababir in Haifa. He said that he was about to elect someone, but his arm couldn't move. He was about to raise his hand, but his arm couldn't move. Allah was stopping his arm. And then when the name of Hazrat Mizza Masroor Ahmed, may Allah be his helper, was called, that's when he remembered this is the person Allah had showed me in the dream and this is the person I should elect. So these stories go on and there's, there's plenty of examples. I think the beautiful thing is that, you know, you have those amazing larger examples and, um, you know, which are so emphatic. But it's those day-to-day -day examples as well that average khudam, mm. average members of the community, you know, whether you're a, a, a kid, a, a grown man, adolescent, woman, etc. They all are having. I'll give you a small example that there was a, there's a tifl, a, a, he's 10 years old, a boy. And he said to me that he, they were going for Umrah. And he had lobbied to be part of this school cricket team. And uh, they wanted to open up these, uh, the, the, the trials. There was going to be some trials, but he was going away, but they were going to open up the link whilst he was doing Umrah. So the mother said, you know what, put away everything. Let's just focus on the Umrah. You need to pray and pray to God. And let's see what happens. So they did the whole Umrah, which is a, it takes time. And once they were settled down, they completed the Umrah. The boy sat down, the mother passed over her phone. That go and check what's happened now. So the boy turned on the phone and he went onto the link. And lo and behold, there was a place for him available still, which was com completely out of the ordinary. Yeah. That's what I'm saying that it's not just those larger and emphatic moments, but those small day -day. things day to day. Yeah. I remember, I, I, I don't know if you recall this, but you mentioned something to me once. Um, so I remember when you were driving down on the motorway yeah. and it was raining really hard, right? And his, your, you can narrate it yourself actually. Yeah. Well, put me on the spot. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember it was, um, I think in preparation for the soul, sometimes they salt the motorways. And at that time I, never had any liquid, liquid that right. windscreen wiper i never had that liquid uh, I, I should have topped it up a lot of people did tell me my missus everyone said you need to top it up i never but anyway as it happened i was behind this truck and i think all of the salt came on my windscreen and they say the last thing you need to do is put Turn the wiper right. up yeah, the so the wiper the wiper I, I turned the wiper on not knowing what to do but now my screen is very unclear and i had no water and it was going at a very kind of at least 60 miles per hour and you can imagine, you panic at that time. Yeah. And at that time, all I knew was just read the Ruh Sharif. That's it, read the Ruh Sharif and pray Allah makes some sort of uh, way. The Ruh Sharif, Allahumma salli ala yeah, Muhammadin wa ala We send salutations to the Holy Prophet yeah. sallallahu alayhi wa And then, lo and behold, it just started raining. It just started raining. And it was enough rain to clear my screen. And then the wipers cleared it all off and then it stopped raining. So, yeah, you're right. I think we, we emphasize, our caliphs have always guided us, that question your faith. Our faith is not based on stories, yeah. it's not based on theory, it's based on experience. And that's what we encourage all of our viewers, MDs and non-MDs alike, to please do so. We're getting a number of uh, questions in, and in fact, I believe I've been told that we have a caller who is going to present a question, Mr. Saeed. as alaikum. Yes, alaikum wa alaikum as Yeah, how, how is your question, Mr. Saeed? Jazakumullah ta'ala as for taking my call. Um, the question is that uh, as we see uh, the topic uh, of today's program is that the Ahmadis are true Muslims. So bearing that in mind, are we saying to other people that uh, um, uh, they are not Muslim or they are not true Muslims? So this is one part. Okay, and so the second part, of, second part of my question is that uh, uh, as we believe that uh, whoever says Kalma, uh, no matter uh, he or she says from uh, his or her heart or just from the tongue, uh, we, we believe it's Muslim. But in this case, are we saying to them, no matter you read Kalma or not, you are not true Muslim unless you are Ahmadi? Okay, so I believe um, you have a two-part question, but once the first part is question answered, it automatically answers the second bit. I'm just going to ask Kashif Saab. Assalamu alaikum, Kashif Saab. Can you hear us? Yes, I heard well. Did you hear the question? So I'll repeat the question. Mr. Said Saab has It's asked. okay, I heard the question. Heard? Okay. Yeah. So, so I would like to ask the brother that when this question is posed, what do we perceive of other Muslims? Are they true Muslims or not? First of all, as you clarified in the beginning, of course, everybody has the right of self-definition. 
And Islam says, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ أَلْقَى عَلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامَ لَسْتَ مُسْلِمًا You have no right to say to somebody who says he's a Muslim that you are not a Muslim. That right is fundamental to every believer that he himself will define his faith. And that right is taken away from us, from Ahmadi Muslims in Pakistan and other countries. We are not even allowed to define ourselves as such. According to our belief, the promised Messiah, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al-Islam, was the same Messiah, Imam Mahdi and Ibn Maryam, that was awaited by all Muslims. Sunni, Shia, Brailvi, everybody was waiting or are waiting still that a leader will come who will lead the Muslim Ummah and he will be divinely inspired. Now, if we, uh, if we pose the question to you, to those who do not believe in Hazrat Mirsi Mawla Islam, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, that what do you believe? The day that Isa ibn Maryam or Jesus, peace be upon him, descends from heaven according to your popular faith, what will you call those Muslims who deny him, who say we will not believe in him? I think you will go one step further even. But okay, you can say that they are still Muslims, they have right to define themselves. But how can they be true Muslims when they reject the obvious prophecy of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So we, Ahmadi Muslims, say the exactly same thing, that the Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Islam has come according to the prophecies, he has fulfilled all the signs, major signs, of the coming of the Messiah. And we believe him to be the true heir, spiritual heir of Islam, of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Only those who believe in him will be true Muslims. And those who reject him will in fact reject the clear decree of the Holy Prophet Islam. ﷺ. Thank you, Kasha Zabna. Very well explained. Would you like to add something? One interesting point uh, during the time of the Holy Prophet ﷺ was that there was a census being conducted within within Medina. And the Sahaba asked around to the Holy Prophet that who should we include in the sense of who should we declare as Muslim? Hazrat simply said, whoever says that they're a Muslim, mm. write their name as Muslim. Yeah. But as Qashif was, Qashif was saying, that what about those do, who reject Hazrat Masih Muhammad Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The simple answer is, Amantu Billahi wa Malaikati wa Qutubihi wa Rasuli. That, you know, I believe in all of Allah Ta'ala's you know, um, messengers, his, his angels, his books. So if you're rejecting a prophet of God, who we believe has a Messiah, Mother, Islam, the promised Messiah, Islam, to be a prophet of God, then you have to ask yourself that, is there a blemish in your faith? Of course, we're not there to judge. Only Allah Ta'ala judges who is what, right? That's not what man's prerogative to do, it's only Allah Ta'ala. But for some reason, Many Muslim scholars, they take it upon themselves and say that, okay, he's a Muslim, but he's not a Muslim. And there's so much sectarianism, yeah. right? Forget the Jamaat, forget Ahmadiyya, right? Shias are declaring Sunnis as non-Muslims and vice versa, and so many other sects. Within the sects Within, as well. exactly. Yeah. Now how, like, that's, that's, that just shows you that there needs to be someone to rectify their beliefs. Mm -hmm. And the person to rectify their belief is the Messiah and Mahdi, who we, Alhamdulillah, have accepted. Yet the rest of the Ummah is still waiting. One thing on that. In, throughout the writings of Hazrat Mizzou Ghulam Ahmad Islam, he made it clear this issue of kufr was raised during his time as well. He said that I don't declare anyone who reads the Kalima, who faces the Qibla, who does, you know, believes in the five pillars of Islam and so on, to be a kafir. I don't. The only time when the Promised Messiah Islam has spoken about kufr about, of other people is when they themselves say that you are a kafir. Then Hazim Zulqulam Ahmad Islam said that I can't do anything about that because the Holy Prophet Wasallam said that anyone who calls another Muslim a kafir has that kufr on them, right? Yeah. So he said that they become a kafir according to the hadith of the Holy Prophet Wasallam. This is not me saying it. This is the Prophet Wasallam and Absolutely. we cannot yeah. reject that. Absolutely. Now, keep your questions coming in. Like we said, um, we are going to have a segment which we tackle all of your questions, there are questions coming in, but keep them coming in. We're now going to move on to our next segment in which we will showcase the love Ahmadi Muslims have for our beloved Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I have firm faith that Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Khatam al Nabiyin. The seal of all the prophets. I also believe that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is the same Imam Mahdi and promised Messiah 
whose advent was prophesied by Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we're now going to go to Kashya Sahib. Kashya Sahib, Assalamu Alaikum. If you could please just present the love Ahmadi Muslims have for our beloved Master, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakumullah, Usman Sahib. Just at the outset, I would like to say that it is a sad fact that opponents of Ahmadiyyat do not read the very expressive love expressed by the Promised Messiah Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al-Islam in his books, in his writings, in his articles. If they were to read these texts with a pure heart, they would find that this is a true lover of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and everything he did was actually a reflection of this very love. In fact, in one of his Persian couplets, he is saying that after the love of God, I am fully intoxicated in the love of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If this is considered short, by short-sighted people to be disbelief, to be kufr, then I swear by God there is no greater kafir than me. Everything Ahmadiyyat has been done from the outset of the start of Islam, if you look at the history before Islam, Islam was being attacked violently by Christian missionaries in India and also by Arya sects, Hindus. They were all vehemently attacking the character and the noble example of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Promised Messiah, Islam, at his very outset, started this holy war of holy war with the pen by writing articles and actually saying that if anybody doubts the truthfulness of the claim of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu I invite you to my my place in Qadiyan. I will make sure you will witness it by your own eyes. This was his claim. And in fact, he says that before I was being, a, I was divinely appointed to this mission to be a reformer, to be the Messiah. I actually saw a dream where an angel said, Hada rajulun yuhibbu Rasulullah. There were angels coming down from heaven and looking for who is the one who is worthy of taking on this great mission of propagating the true Islam in the world. And then they saw, they pointed their finger at him, Hazur, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam and Islam, and said that this is the one who has true love of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, if we look at his life, his legacy, what he did, what he wrote, I'm sure, and I, I plead to the viewers that please go through these texts. And they've inspired Ahmadiyyat ever since. Our Khilafat, our leadership has throughout the century arranged seminars, write, written books, inspired us believers, Ahmadis in all, over the, all across the globe, to arrange seminars, to distribute literature. Even here in Sweden, we have this uh, True Muhammad teaching campaign. And we actually, in response to the attacks on Islam, present the true teachings of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam in a way where we do not see a, such a concerted effort being done by any other Muslim ummah in the ummah. By the grace of Allah, this is because we have a united leadership who divinely inspires us to present the honor of the Holy Prophet. I remember here in, uh, it was in the Nordic countries in Denmark in 2012, I think, and after that it's been happening again and again, unfortunately. They published caricatures of the Holy Prophet Wasallam, and you recently heard about these Quran bannings. So in response to that, by the guidance of our leader, we have been out on the streets in more than 90 cities of Sweden alone, and we've been writing articles and propagating the true teaching of Islam. And there is a complete silence from other Muslims. So this is done wholly because we are the one who not only claim to love the Prophet, but in practical example, we are the one who present his noble life, his character, at a time when the attacks on Islam is more aggressive, more fierce than in any time in history, by the grace of Allah Ta'ala. Jazakallah. Jazakallah, Kashya Sahib. As I said, there's a number of comments and questions that are coming in. I'm just going to read one um, comment that we received. I believe it's a question on our YouTube uh, chat. The question is, what about those who aren't rejecting, but on the search for truth and are undecided? They're doing their best. Per hadith, their intentions matter. How would you tackle that? Yeah, of course, intentions is the foundation to everything, right? Um, and those that are searching, they're searching for the truth. Allah Ta'ala will guide. Searching, Hazrat Musim Adil has said that talib haq the one who's searching for the truth, if he searches with sincerity, Allah Ta'ala will surely guide. And this ample example of that, you know, and Hazur, 
beloved Hazur, Hazrat Mirza Masoor Ahmed, may Allah be his helper, often describes these examples, especially during the annual convention here in the United Kingdom. You know, when, when he mentions about those that have accepted Islam, Ahmadiyyat, their stories, their narratives. And, you know, they're not all those that have, have stem from Muslim backgrounds, but they come from atheistic back, backgrounds or other religions as well. But their journey is such that they are searching for the truth with a, full, with a sincere heart. Allah Ta'ala in the Holy Quran, unlike other, uh, unlike Ahmadi Muslims, other Muslims say that it is only Muslims that are going to find salvation. We can't determine that. Allah Ta'ala's rahmat, Allah Ta'ala's mercy encompasses everything. If someone has the right intention and they're praying to Allah Ta'ala, right, and they may not reach towards Islam, but Allah Ta'ala says that there will be no khawf, there, will be, there won't be any fear for them. There is no sorrow for them because Allah Ta'ala will judge them on their intention. So that's really the answer that, yes, yeah. Allah Ta'ala will guide you or will guide the one who tries to find Allah Ta'ala with a pure heart and soul. Keep your questions, comments and messages coming in. We will go through all of them. And again, please call in. This is a platform for you to call in and raise any allegation that you may have or present what you may have heard about us that you don't know if it's true or not. We will tackle your questions. We're now going to move on to our next segment, which we will discuss how Islam is being practiced in our day-to-day -day lives. It is not enough for a Muslim to wait until someone asks for help. Rather, it is his duty to recognize the suffering of others and to make whatever sacrifices are required in order to help them overcome their challenges or troubles. Allah says in the Holy Quran that you are the best of the people raised for the good of mankind. And so in doing so, our Khudam, they are trained from the very young age that in order to attain the nearness of Allah, they have to serve the mankind. Uh, just like anybody else, uh, they also work, they also go to school, they also have families, they also have those other chores and tasks, just like anybody else. They have busy lives, but this is all done outside of uh, their busy schedule as well. They take out that time after work, they take out the time after school, uh, they spend the evenings and weekends uh, to, to, uh, for such humanitarian projects uh, to gain the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. So, Qudu Sahib, if you could present to us how Islam is being practiced on a, in a practical way in our day-to-day -day lives. So, Usman, the purpose of any religion, specifically Islam, is twofold. And as the Messiah Islam has mentioned it in a very summarized form, fulfilling the rights of Allah, Hakukullah, and secondly, Hakukul Ibad, following, you know, fulfilling the rights that we owe to mankind. And we find the Ahmadi Muslim community all of its members are striving towards both these elements. They're striving, as you know, Fatih explained earlier as well, to gain a relationship with God Almighty, forge a really close connection with God, following the noble example of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, increasing their faith and love for him. And then thirdly, which is just as important as Allah has mentioned, is serving mankind. And they're doing that in various capacities, in various ways and forms. But the first element I, I want to pick on, Osman, is how are they building that connection? Of course, we've heard that how Allah Ta'ala's treatment is with them. But you realize that in day-to-day -day life, they are giving preference to their faith over all worldly things. And I want to quote a simple example. A khadim said to me, an a, a, a adolescent boy, he said that whilst he was at work, um, they had this communal area, which they said that you can utilize to pray. So one day he went knocking on the door and they were, they were holding a meeting. And some people may say, okay, you know what? He may, someone may feel shy, you know, they want to say anything, but he knocked and said, look, I'm going to pray, it's my prayer time. And they very respectfully got up and said, yeah, you know, you know use, utilize this space. You have young kids who are going to school and they're going into a room, a classroom during their break or whenever, and they're going and offering their prayers. They're giving preference to prayers. They're giving preference to God Almighty over all worldly things. This is something so unique. I remember I went to Milton Keynes only recently. One, uh, one man approached me and he said, you know, for the past few years, I've been offering the Hajjad prayer, the pre-dawn prayer, before, before even the morning prayer, for, many, for two, three years now. And I feel so much content. And if I miss it, that's when I feel that my day isn't going right. So that's how Ahmadiyyat, or the youth of the, of, the, of, the, of the community and members of the community are striving for God Almighty, even in this materialistic world. And then you see you know, how Allah Ta'ala's treatment is with them. 
they answer, Allah Ta'ala answers their prayers. He, you know, shows them his signs. And of course, you know, he forges a closer relationship with such individuals. So there are, you know, ample amount of examples like that where, you know, members of the community, you know, they're offering their services, they're offering whatever they can for the way of God Almighty. And in return, Allah Ta'ala is blessing them as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of things that come to mind. I remember from a young age, there's certain phrases that we all was hear. For example, if you remember God in a time of ease, he'll remember you in a time of hardship. And I say that because we're going through the blessed month of Ramadan and Muslims across the world are trying to be the best versions of themselves. But it's this spiritual training that we try to develop these these qualities, these morals throughout the rest of our year as well for the rest of our rather than it's not just like a switch we just turn it on and now we're Muslim when we need to be you know you only see this like, as the program show says inside Ahmadiyya people yeah. from the outside won't see this when they come to Ahmadiyya mosques they come within the community they'll see how connected our youth are to Islam I was just doing an analysis right so if the Gulf is coming around the corner yeah. you know the last 10 days where you sit in retreat within the mosques and Believe it or not, in some mosques, two-thirds of them are aged under 40, the people that are sitting at the gut. Well, two-thirds, right? Yeah. Overall, I, the analysis that I was doing before coming is 45%, mm. right, are between the ages of, you know, 16 and 40. Yeah. That's a huge percentage where, you know, you see the youth are taking, you know, a strive towards their faith and giving, all up, giving up the materialism around them, yeah. which is so unique. You mentioned about Ramzan. I, I remember I watched a video of a, a non ahmadi Muslim woman. And she said, you know, she gets up in the morning and she has her sehri, her suhoor, and then she goes to work. There was just no mention of prayers, no mention of reciting the Holy Quran, right? Whereas we're encouraged. I don't remember a Ramazan where, you know, our parents from very childhood that you have to finish the Holy Quran, at least one circuit, one yeah. incomplete circuit. Yeah. And that's something that has been passed on to our next generation as well. Two, the last two sermons of our Khalifa were about the Holy Quran yeah. and, and how it's so important in, in Ramadan. And yeah, no, we're going we're gonna to have to move on because we've got loads of questions yeah. coming in and I wanna, don't want to miss anyone. I'm just going to present one question. And Fatih, if you could just answer this. The question is, after many literatures explaining the difference between Ahmadis and non-Ahmadis, mm -hmm. by proving the death of Jesus, the coming of the Messiah and all other signs of latter days, what can we Ahmadis take as a current distinguished proof that can differentiate us from other Muslims? So Khilafat. if there's one proof, you could say. Khilafat. Khilafat. Our Khalifa, the current Khalifa, Hazim is Masru Ahmed, may Allah be his helper. Just a few years ago, he challenged the Muslim Ummah. Yeah. He said, establish a Khalifa, everyone become united, and we'll do the bath as well. But they can't. Yeah. And they've tried again and again and again. And it's impossible for them to establish it because it's Allah who established it. There's lots on social media, you'll see lots of comments. And it's, it's sad when I read them, actually. They say, as an ummah, we're so disunited, stop fighting. You know, they're big ulama, they're always fighting amongst each other, doing takfir. They're like, stop fighting, we need to show our morals, what will others say? For Ahmadis, it's not an issue. We're united with Khilafat, and there is no other Muslim community, no other Muslim sect, no one who can say that we have Khilafah. Um, this is only, you know, in the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. They're so weird, like you'll find hashtags trending, right? That they need Khilafat, yeah, they want exactly. Khilafat. Yeah. Also, there was a whole Khilafat movement, right? Were established by the kings of, you know, certain Muslim countries, yeah. right? They, 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 pumped they, money, they pumped money into it. They tried holding a, a, a Majlis Shura of the entire Ummah together, called everyone yeah. together. They wanted, to, they wanted to become the Khalifa. Yeah. But Allah Ta'ala says, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لِيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ That is Allah Ta'ala's promise. He's the one who's going to make yeah. the Khalifa. It's not, yeah. no individual is going to make the Khalifa. Sure. They can try, and they have been trying for the last, you know, so many years, and they will dry, die trying as well, yeah. right? Yeah. But they will not be able to establish Khalafat Allah min Hajj and Nabuwa, the Khalafat which is on the precepts of Prophet. Right? Because Khilaf has already been established. You need a prophet of God first, right? which is Hazrat Masih Muhammad Alayhi Salaam. Yeah. And only then can Khilafat's successes come up. And Usman, like I said at the beginning, this challenge has been made just a few years ago yeah. by our current Khalifa, telling the Muslims, establish Khilafat. And the, just the last point on this, that Hazur, uh, His Holiness mentioned, right, then, as a Hargiz nahi hoga, as a Hargiz nahi hoga, as a Hargiz nahi hoga. Yeah. Like they will be unable, unable to, do to do this. Able to do it, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All right, we're now going to go into a Quick fire round, so feel free. And I know, Kashif, it's so difficult for us to include him because he's on Skype, but 
Kasha Sab, feel free to jump in whenever. I'm just going to read out some of these allegations that have been sent in to us. Uh, allegation number one is Qadianis believe Mirza Ghulam and <laughs> actually one before I say it, Qadianis is a term that is used for someone who's from Qadian. And unfortunately, our non Ahmadi Muslims brothers refer to all Ahmadi Muslims as Qadianis. But actually, we're Ahmadi Muslims. And it's actually derogatory. They use yeah. it in a very derogatory way. But I'll read it as it's been sent. Qadianis believe Mirza Ghulam Ahmad was the spiritual coming of Hazrat Isa al Islam and the Imam Mahdi. Does this mean that he was the spiritual Imam Mahdi and not the real one? Yeah. One interesting point, right? This was the same stance that the Jews took as well, yeah. right? When Prophet Jesus alayhi salam, was commissioned by God Almighty. The Jews said that, hold on, wait, uh, you know, it wasn't Elijah meant to come. Mm. And they're like, as he said, some said, yes, he did. And he came in the form of Prophet Yahya, John the Baptist. So, they, you know, a person can come in the spirit in the same khaslet, it's the same fitra yeah. of the individual, of the, of the, of the Prophet that mentioned in the same case. When we say has Isa alayhi salatu salam is going to descend again, it's not going to be the physical dissension yeah. of, that yeah. of that prophet that came over 2,000 years ago. Yeah. That's absurdity, right? Absolutely. You the know. Quran proves his demise, his death, right? So there needs to be someone who's come in the likeness of Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu salam. Next question um, is from Twitter. It says, Qadianis do not have any regard to Tajweed or the recitation of the Holy Quran. I guess it's more of a comment really, but is there anything you'd like to this is very the, quick fire just reply? You know, these kind of allegations show the uh, superficial things, which yeah. these they never engaged in, like we were discussing earlier, the spiritual elements which Hazrat Mizra Ghulam Ahmad Islam brought, or the academic or the theology. These are superficial things that anyone can say against anyone. Just this show is going live on MTA International. It's Ramadan. Just turn on MTA International for two minutes and you will see if Ahmadis can read the Qur'an with Tajweed or not. I think following this program, I think there is a whole Qur'an, yeah. chat, the whole part will be recited, right? And you can actually go see it. Right, so they can follow that. Also, look at Hazrat Bilal as Allah knows example, right? People, the Sahaba will, uh, you know, say comments about Hazrat Bilal, okay, he cannot pr pronounce Sheen. He used to say, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. And Hazrat Bilal came to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, these, yeah. these, you know, they're, 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 they are, you know, teasing me for this. And the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, compassionately, you know, showed him love and affection. And Azul said that I preferred you Asadu Allah ila, to anyone's Asadu Allah ila. So it's not, it's about what's in here, what matters, yeah. right? If we love the Holy Quran, if we recite the Holy Quran, and like I mentioned to you that during the blessed month of Ramadan, we've been advised over and over again yeah. to recite the Holy Quran, to listen to its translation, to read its translation, to listen to its commentaries yeah, and implement it in our lives. Next question of this quick fire round is the book of Ahmadi Muslims is different from the Holy Quran. This is one common people. The Quran there. Well, there. I, look, I, I can only you know, go and show this the Holy Quran. This is the translation uh, version, but it's got 114 chapters. It's got 30 parts. It's exactly the same as any I other think, Quran. Yeah. I think one, one thing that we always say is that we have a lot more in common than different. Yeah, we yeah, believe yeah. in the same I, Quran, same Kalma, yeah. uh, same direction we pray in, f fast in the month of Ramadan, we try our best to perform Hajj as is mentioned. The only one difference is, is in the interpretation of the Messiah that was with us. You know, you said that there's a lot of misconceptions and we are actually very similar. The reason is because the ulama are the ones who are deceiving their congregations. Just recently, one alim, so-called so alim, alim, right, so-called, said that the Qur'an Ahmadis follow is Dhafkira, this book, right? And this is the Qur'an of yeah. Hazrat Ghulam Ahmad Islam. This is a compilation of his revelations, dreams, and visions. It's never has, and this was compiled after his demise, yeah. right? Years after. So it's, it's like Gashif Sahib was saying, we really encourage the Muslims who are watching to read Ahmed, Ahmadi literature for themselves and not go on what the ulama are saying. They're lies, just giving pure lies. And last question of this quick fire round, because we only have uh, a short while left for this program to finish, it is Guardianism, I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly, but Guardianism is not Islam and cannot even be called a religion. It is a cult. Again, it's just a comment. Kashif is there. I'd like to bring Kashif into the conversation. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to uh, express that uh, we're speaking about the love of the Holy Quran and uh, all the superficiality around it. Let us see what the judgment of the Holy Prophet of Islam was. He said that a time would come, it is in Mishkat al-Musabi, a time will come when nothing will remain of Islam 
without it except its name, and nothing will remain of the Quran except its writing. What does it mean? Muslims will love the Quran only superficially. They will read it, they will recite it, they will print it in very, very nice versions, very gilded versions, but they will not ponder over it. That is why Ahmadiyyat came to the world, so that Muslims are able to ponder over the Holy Quran. And the tafasir, the exegesis presented by the Islam Ahmadiyya community outshine all other contemporary and even historical uh, tafasir. If you read them, you will find guidance and light. And those mockingly saying that Ahmadiyya is a cult, again, please, for God's sake, read this tafasir. Read not only how we out, outwardly, you know, Islam is a universal religion. It is not only for the Arabs. Indonesians, Americans, everybody will accept Ahmadiyyat. And they will recite the Quran in their own, uh, in their own pronunciation, with their own love and expression. But who will understand the Quran? That is the important thing. So read the literature. Absolutely. Make it. Jazakallah, Kashi Saab. Um, do you quickly want to add something? Call, quickly, call very one. short time. If a Muslim says that Ahmadis are cult, a cult, it's, it's shocking because the reason they're saying is because Ahmadis have you know complete loyalty and obedience to the Khalifa, right? They're showing absolute loyalty and obedience. And they're saying this is cultish behavior, this is a cult. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to do the same here more. They were even more in love with the Holy Prophet. Sallam. They would follow him, they would want to touch his body, they would want to, you know, touch the water of his ablution. That was they would say that tell us to go into the sea, jump into the sea. We'll jump into the sea without asking any question. So for a Muslim to say this is shocking. And yes. just finally, I understand this. I understand sometimes when they say that we are a cult. The reason is because they haven't had Khilafat for such a long time that they don't even know what obedience is. Yeah. They can't even practice obedience. They don't understand the spiritual element of obedience. And when they see this obedience in Ahmadis and this loyalty to the Khalifa, they say this is a cult. And yeah. they're forgetting the, their own history, our own history of Islam and the Sahaba and the love they had for the Holy Prophet no, Jazakallah, thank you to all three of you for contributing into today's program. Now, we've taken your questions. There are some questions that we weren't able, we didn't have time to put into this program, but we will answer these questions in the following programs. But it's now time for us to ask you guys a question. Now, through Allah's grace and mercy, the Ahmadi Muslim community has been able to honor the Holy Quran and honor the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and has always prioritized the importance of the power of prayer. Just some small examples I'd like to present before you. The Ahmadiyyat has been established in 213 countries around the world. 76 translations of the Holy Quran, Sirat al Nabi conferences only in the UK alone have been held in 92 chapters, which mean we've educated more than 30,000 people across the UK. 6.7 million leaflets, pamphlets or folders were printed worldwide in 46 languages to spread the message of the true Islam. In 102 countries, more than 7.6 million leaflets were distributed with an approximate reach of 11.6 million people. 6,041 exhibitions were held through which 29,000 people received the message of Islam and Ahmadiyyat. More than 1,200 translations of the Holy Quran were handed out to members of the public worldwide by the Jamaat. Now, even these efforts, I've just mentioned it very quickly, but even these efforts, Ahmadi Muslims consider to be humble in their nature. Now, it's shocking that such a significant minority of the opposition of the community are so viciously opposed to each of these, these actions that we do, when in reality, this is at the heart of our faith as Muslims, to serve and to propagate and to preach the true message of the Holy Quran, the true teachings of Islam, and the true character of the Holy Prophet ﷺ before the world. So here's our challenge to you. If as Ahmadi Muslims, we're honoring the Quran and we're honoring the Holy Prophet ﷺ, who is the seal of all the prophets, and we're prioritizing Salat, if all of the above is a terrible crime, then come onto the show and tell us, what have you done? We believe that we're the only community within the sect of Islam, within this Ummah of Islam that can be called a Jamaat. We're one, we're united under one leadership. And through this leadership, we pro propagate the true teachings of Islam. Tell us what you have done. Tell us how as a united form, as one united body, as one Muslim Ummah, what have you done to promote the true teachings of Islam? What have you done to promote the true character of our beloved master, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam?
You see, inside Ahmadiyya is a program. It's for you. It's for you to come on and have this conversation. Like I said, it will be a fair conversation. But it's something that we can't force you to do. It's something we can only request you to do. Come onto the show, have your say. Let's have a fair discussion. We're not going to be going anywhere. We'll see you next week, same time. See you more at Inside Ahmadiyya next week. Assalamu alaikum. نزل المهدي فينا مرحبا شمس الزمان فأقام الدين شرعا للذي يبغي الجنان ترى الودق يخرج من خلاله فترى الودق يخرج من خلاله وينزل من السماء من جبال فيها من برد فيصيب به من 